Hello, um, wonderful to be chatting to all of you here from my own sitting room, as it were, but also as it were from UCC, really. Um, we're all working like mad from home. Um, and I am actually wearing red and white, although you can't really see it, but just so that you understand we're from Cork. Um, so uh, one of the things I want to say at the beginning is just about our title, Cop On, which is a little cheeky theme. Um, but I wanted, and Brian, we wanted to kind of get across the notion that community is a practice for everyone and that this is a rallying call. I'd also like to acknowledge that my first chat ever about the notion of cop on and trying to find acronyms uh, to kind of, you know, yeah, rally the troops was with my great colleague, Jacinta McKeown, uh, and we were at the ISATL conference, the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning conference together in Bergen in Norway. And I have referenced all of this at the end of the presentation. And uh, we began to think about different ways of thinking about uh, communities of practice and uh, came up with this. And then my head conference, as it were, was the first chance to use it. Now, um, so, you know, I have given detailed notes, by the way, a few housekeeping things to say um, on, on each of these um, slides so that I won't go into the details of introducing myself and Brian, except to tell you that we are both working at CERTL, CERT, Centre for the Integration of Research, Teaching and Learning at UCC. And Brian also, of course, uh, is the inclusive advisor uh, for teaching and learning and, and uh, working with Disability Support Service at UCC. So we have great synergies together. Now, another thing I want to say is that there's a longer <coughs> presentation going with this because, of course, we can't possibly in the short time um, go into the detail that we want about the theoretical underpinnings that inform this presentation. Uh, so you'll have those in a longer one as well. Now, just moving on to um, uh, the second slide, uh, you know, which is titled Through the Looking Glass, New Pop on the Block. <laughs> so we're kind of, uh, we're trying to get again play on, on the pawn of the pop. But, uh, you know, as Alice goes through the looking glass, um, when we were first thinking and writing about this, of course, there was no COVID-19. So what we are very conscious of now, and which is why we would like to have these um, questions in the chat box, and Christine has offered to help us here, is that we want to think about in what way now as well, given that we're using more um, COP than ever online, communities of practice, you know, in what ways, if any, does the online genre uh, change the nature of, of um, communities of practice? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of communities of practice um, in a webinar setting? And what I would like to do later then is to maybe do some research and thinking about the themes that come up in the chat and in the Q&A and write something else for our ahead and for the magazine about this. Um, because I think that what's wonderful the last few weeks, I mean, I call this now my Friday fix, um, what is fantastic is the way in which um, the chat uh, box, but also the whole community of practice has taken off in this way and ahead uh, in a way that we wouldn't have had even if we had our wonderful conference. Um, so the on, and this is what I'd call like pedagogical triage and that, that word triage, which comes on the one hand, you know, from, from medicine and from emergency medicine, but we are finding new and innovative and wonderful ways now um, to interact together. Uh, so I think, you know, in the light of what Etienne Wenger um, had said earlier about communities of practice and the whole idea of the community creating moments of engagement that we, we want to build on this and we want to see, you know, as, as this unfolds, what, what you think about it. Um, now to, to get going then in the presentation, our abstract uh, quoted the following uh, from Lee Shulman, and I just want to read a little of this because I think it's vital. Lee Shulman is a, a scholar in the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Movement, uh, which we have spoken before in a head, but also have written a lot about, and uh, you'll see that in the notes and in references we give at the end. Um, so as I, I think it's worth reading, we close the classroom door and experience pedagogical solitude. Whereas in our lives as scholars, we are members of active communities, communities of conversation, communities of evaluation, communities in which we gather with others to exchange our findings, our methods and our excuses. I now believe that the reason teaching is not more valued in the academy is because the way we treat teaching removes it from the community of scholars. And I think this is a vital learning for us, um, you know, in higher ed uh, and in our professional development programs, that um, teaching is no longer about remediation. 
no longer the quick fix. It's about investigation and it's about working as a community and doing the same things we would do really in our research, sharing our thinking, uh, looking for ideas from others, problematizing, hypothesizing as we do in our own disciplines. So I think this is key to understanding a uh, community of practice. Uh, that community, it is community property and, and uh, that's why we'll thrive when we work together. Um, so again, you'll see the strong influence of the scholarship of teaching and learning and this presentation in this other quotation as well from um, Ernest Boyer, uh, from that wonderful book, Scholarship Reconsidered. And uh, again, it speaks immediately to UDL. Really. We think of teaching as a dynamic endeavor, uh, you know, which involves all of the metaphors, if you like, of, of teaching. Um, you know, that build bridges uh, from the teacher's understanding to the student's learning. And pedagogical procedures must be carefully planned. So this is where our UDL will come in in our communities of practice to make it inclusive. We have to have a lot of planning that involves, you know, all our students and that considers diversity. So that we are continuously examining this and we're relating directly to our discipline. But we are seeing ultimately knowing and learning as communal acts. And I think this is you know, what as well the, this vibrant online um, series um, by Ahead is bringing the whole notion of the communal act and how research advances in that way, because of course so many, you know, two heads are better than one as it were. So again, just to finish on that, with great vision, great, uh, with this vision, sorry, great teachers create a common ground of intellectual commitment. And so we're back at that notion as well as Wenger pointed out to us some weeks ago in this wonderful little keynote as well at the beginning of this series, the whole notion of, of committing and contracting in and the idea of, you know, learning depending on the engagement uh, and the commitment and on engaging with uncertainty. And, and this is indeed a journey our teaching and learning beset with uncertainty. Now, so then having said that, I'll be able to move a little more quickly on now because I'm conscious as well that I want to give 10 minutes to Brian. This is just a picture for you of our teaching and learning center. Um, and on the left, you see it's the West Lodge at UCC and we are on the main campus adjacent to uh, the um, Aula Maxima and if you like the council room and seat of power in the university. And on the right hand side is a picture of uh, the new hub, which uh, is now directly across really from um, the West Lodge. But what I, I want to say is that the whole notion of communities of practice are constantly changing and transforming in the light of the spaces as well in which we work. And so our community of practice now, uh, by definition, and there are several communities within that, is, is ever you know, changing in the light of the changing face as well of the campus and of our connections, uh, you know, virtual and face-to-face. -face. Um, so just to show you as well then for this, uh, Brian and I are standing in front here of the new hub because Brian's office is now located in the hub. And of course we have Enzo with us as well in the picture. Enzo is, is only the second dog ever in history to hold the postgraduate certificate diploma and master's in teaching and learning in higher education. <laughs> and um, then you, the picture on the right shows us in the hub and we'll come later to see Brian in his office. Now, just to show you, here is the hub from the top of, uh, as it were, the, to the top of it. And this is a wonderful, innovative space. And we're just saying how the face of whatever university or setting you are in, um, when that changes, your range of communities of practice uh, change and uh, your interconnections and your collaborative uh, possibilities. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to draw attention to that. Um, now, coming to a key slide, um, and after this, maybe we, we'll see uh, what people are saying, um, maybe on the chat about communities of practice, Christine, when I kind of have a quick look at this one. So, um, you know, what I have written here on the left, and when we were talking about it, Brian and I, we think of the community of practice as organic and dynamic, um, and I've already kind of hinted about that. Uh, you know, growing and changing within and across disciplines and cultures. And again, within genre, like this setting, the online genre changes how we communicate. And we see communities of practice as well as inclusive when teachers are working towards promoting inclusive practice in their teaching. So I suppose that's where we want to bring in the inclusive part, you know, and that kind of gels us together as a community. But, um, you know, in my many years of working at UCC now directly and full time since 1995, um, you know, these are the things that strike me about uh, communities of practice. It's about culture. So there has to be a change of the culture and that has to work from 
the top down as well as the bottom up. And we've been working on it in the bottom up over time since about 1995, you know, through staff orientation at the beginning, then when HEA funding came on board, um, you know, and when we had quality promotion units in the late 90s, suddenly there were new opportunities uh, to develop the culture. But it is about that. And I think as well, we should be patient with each other. Communities of practice, you know, don't grow uh, just, uh, you know, um, instantly. They take time. And of course, one of the reasons why we're able to build such a great community now online at ahead is because, of course, we have had years of meeting at conferences anyway, face to face. So it's not that we're doing this either in six weeks. It has been many years of building this up. So time again is another heading that I have there is of the essence. Um, you know, what we have time historical as well as time present. Um, and I think that also affects uh, how we uh, construct the community. Space is also, I've kind of mentioned there earlier in showing you our own teaching and learning center. But space, again, we've now in, in this community of practice, for example, online, we're in the virtual space. Uh, and of course, we no longer say virtual versus real, as if the virtual is unreal. It is very real and it is all we have at the moment. Uh, so I think space, though, does change how we interact. Um, and it's very interesting the different ways, uh, you know, that that happens. For example, you know, in the Abbey at the moment, the wonderful theatrical um, productions that are going on, and they're all kind of monologues of people in their own homes. So, again, we want to make the great advantage of the cop on part is that we can turn the monologue into a dialogue, and, and that's, you know, what will happen. Uh, and again, we see that in the pedagogical triage, as it were, of our, uh, you know, working with our students online. Um, that we are now more and more becoming a community uh, of practice and several sub-communities of practice in order to reach out to students. So again, I bring up the point that trust is vital. You know, trust over time. You can't do anything unless you have trust. And Etienne Wenger, trainer, makes that point as well about the importance of trust and security. Equally, uh, I think the idea of, of research, um, you know, that we're able to research and we were saying earlier about the scholarship of teaching and learning idea, we can research our teaching, we can stand back from it, critique it, um, document it. And I think otherwise in our communities of practice, we'll have wonderful talk and wonderful chats, but they'll disappear like dry ice. So we have to hang on to what's being said, which is why I'm so interested at the moment in hearing about the chat line. And then finally, just to highlight, um, you know, the whole notion of connectivity that, and communication. So they go together. We are connected with people. In this very seminar, this moment, we are connected with people across the globe. Um, you know, and uh, I, I think that's um, really very assuring as well. But it also opens us up to several ideas that we might otherwise not have in such a setting. So, Christine, could I, I ask if there are comments that you might like to share at this point or something that's coming up? Oh, yeah, definitely, Marion. Um, fantastic um, work as ever. Um, so we've had a few um, people, If I know so a few participants are raising their hands. If they want to maybe put the suggestions in the comment box instead um, mm -hmm. is, is kind of the way we're doing it. So I think Robert Hickey had a point um, where he said how it's more important than ever. But in some ways, you you know, you don't have the chat over the cup of tea like you used to have. So it's it's a new way of, of moving, a new way of connecting. Yes, absolutely. And Carolee Klein from British Columbia. Hello. Yeah, uh, she, yeah, I <laughs> she said when the geographical barriers are reduced in this virtual opportunity of community, it it's it's just fantastic because it allows people that wouldn't ordinarily connect able to, to get together. Absolutely. I look forward to reading these in detail later. Um, so I, I'll press on because I'm conscious that uh, Brian will need uh, time. So uh, just, I won't go into this in any depth now, but to say that we do have to think as well in the community of practice, how is your university connecting? Uh, you know, we see here um, in this slide where we have learning and teaching, but we have to connect, you know, with the community, with disciplines, with industry, with the library, with sports, with research and innovation. So it's a huge, um, communities of practice are dynamic and they interact and, you know, that learning network is constantly stretching out. Um, so in our own courses, uh, you'll see there in, in, the, in the diagram on, on, on the right, courses there since 2007, which see the huge jump from when we went online in 2015. So the online community, um, you know, it can thrive and communities of practice in online settings 
um, now give people the chance to work when they want as well at different times of the evening. And the discussion fora, for example, which are vital as part of uh, the online offering, um, that allows people to go in and talk when it suits them and in their family setting. Um, and I think this has been a huge um, bonus for us that more people are now able to take our courses. And you'll see on the left, I won't go into it now, but the kinds of people that we have from library staff, centre managers, clinical staff, as well as uh, the academic staff and researchers and so on. Um, and over 70% of our staff have a qualification of teaching and learning higher ed, which is a marvellous um, boom uh, for our students learning also. Now, just to say before I hand over now uh, to Brian that the course portfolio model is the one we're working on. That is to say, we, we, we ask the staff to look at a course they are uh, teaching and to redesign it in terms of UDL uh, and inclusion and, and teaching for understanding. Um, now, I have given extensive notes on these um, in, in the presentation, so you can follow that up. And again, we have written in depth about it in um, a chapter in that um, great book, which was launched at last year's AHEAD conference, um, edited by Sean Bracken, who's also with us in these seminars, and uh, Katie Novak. Uh, so again, you'll get full details and, and a one case study there from uh, our Kevin Murphy in pharmacy at UCC as well. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to Brian. Brian, I'm longer than I thought anyway. <laughs> so, um, okay, Marion, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, myself, good, good afternoon to you all. To you all. I'm delighted to be here. And I'll just press on by saying that um, I'm one of the teaching fellows who facilitate the um, delivery and uh, assessment of the postgraduate diploma in teaching and learning in higher education at University College Cork. And um, with my colleagues, um, the other teaching fellows, um, we, we all make up quite a diverse group. We come from right across the disciplines, um, ranging from medicine to computer science to, to arts and everything in between. So um, we're quite a diverse group. Um, we would have all um, completed our, our masters in teaching and learning in higher education. So um, uh, I represent the Disability Support Service, which is testament to, to the inclusivity of, of the group. Um, each of us takes responsibility for 10 students, the uh, students being teaching staff throughout the college who undertake our courses. And um, we, uh, we, we facilitate the, the discussion groups and we um, look after assessment of the, the course. And um, we um, organize, uh, communities of practice among our, our students as each group becomes a community of practice and um, with the theory they're, they're um, taught to implement in their teaching is very inclusive theory um, using universal um, design for learning, teaching for understanding and multiple intelligences theory. So um, we, we um, create very, very in, inclusive communities of practice and these teachers um, are required to research their own teaching and become scholars of teaching um, and learning as they um, uh, create research portfolios um, on, on selected modules that they choose. E each one of them also has a critical friend from within the group and um, and acts as a critical friend for someone in the group. And um, I don't mean critical to sound um, critical. They, they are more advocates for success for one another and they um, are there to be able to comment on one another's work and to be able to see things from a completely different angle. Um, and the one critical friend could, could be in arts and he could be acting as a critical friend to a doctor in medicine and you would be amazed the synergies that develop between the different disciplines and they have access to opinions that they would never otherwise have, have had. So um, um, I will look at um, two, two case studies being um, examples from my um, 
my, my own group last last year and um, again I will just sh show the variety by choosing one from uh, medicine and one from arts. Um, first I look at um, Karen Donovan and Karen teaches um, a, a non-ward practical based medication management program. Um, she is a um, she, she uh, ha, has this, this course is, is um, primarily on the ward. It is practically all on the ward, apart from one uh, week prep work where um, they uh, revise uh, material on um, policy and procedure for medication management. And um, they familiarize themselves with the 10 rights of medication management. Um, they, they, these students, even though they would all have attended um, pharmacology lectures and lectures on medication management in the past, They're, these are four chair students, um, they, they still um, would come from very different backgrounds in the sense that many of them may have been rostered out to different environments, so some would have more experience with medication management. So Karen creates multiple forms of representation um, by, um, by having a variety in her presentations during the prep week. Um, during the prep week, they all also do um, uh, a short um, in online interactive course on becoming and familiarizing themselves with the 10 rights of medication management. And they also work as groups in discussing and reviewing um, one another's um, uh, work on, on medication management. Sorry, Brian, can I just up the 20 minutes is up. Now I gave, a, I think about maybe three minutes extra there as well, but just say thanks very much. Uh, I mean, I think you're just hitting kind of a really interesting session yeah, in terms I, of the UDL. It, yeah, the, the case studies are quite interesting and they, they are available on the longer version of our um, presentation um, where, where, where you can see um, exactly what Ken and, and uh, uh, Karen have been up to and how they have developed communities of practice among their own students and um, how they have looked at, at their own work through the lens of, of universal design for learning to create as much inclusivity as possible. So, um, sorry, I can't get through the, the rest um, so another time. So yeah, you. no, I mean, well, you've already, both of you have gone through quite a lot there in terms of the community of practice um, and getting out <laughs> even just to think about, you know, even that virtual community of practice that's happening right now and whether, I suppose, people are starting to think maybe is it less or more important or just a different type of community of practice. So it's good to hear that even those student case studies that I think you were saying as well, they worked online as well. Um, yeah, yeah, they they did they their uh, on, online programs. Yeah, um, so, so, I so. suppose in terms of even that kind of training that's happening with even young lectures, like where that's kind of embedded, you know, they're you know kind of indoctrinated into that kind of virtual virtual community of practice. So it'll be interesting to see in like ten years' time how this kind of virtual community of practice kind of evolves as well. So. It'll be interesting how that space kind of um, develops. Yeah, 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 indeed.